Hi, my name is Florian Parche, and for my advanced data science with IBM Capstone project, I try to predict the German Bundesliga, that is, German soccer. Let's start with an overview. As I just said, I try to predict the outcome of these Bundesliga games. Outcome defined as in home team win, draw, or away team win. I therefore implemented three machine learning algorithms, a feedforward neural network, a decision tree, and a support vector machine model. So all rather on the simple side. The goal is to outperform the naive picks, that is always picking the favorite or always picking the home team. The ultimate goal, the use case, is to beat your friends, family, and colleagues, so to predict better than them. I'd like to start by giving you the result uh, this early. 0.35% is by how much the neural net beats picking the favorite. Obviously, that's just marginal and not all that great. At least it outperforms the home team by 4%, but overall it does not seem like a neural net performs any better than picking the favorite. The data I use for this project includes 3,780 games, including 28 different teams over the course from 2001 till May 2018. I retrieved the data from football-data.co.uk, as you can see in the footnote. They have lots of Excel sheets covering different leagues, and all these Excel sheets include lots of data on the games played during a season. The little problem here is that they have Excel sheets for each individual season, and the information they have in each Excel sheet changes. So I had to do some cleaning up there. And also, as you can see to the bottom right, there are not all that many features that you can retrieve from these uh, Excel sheets from data from the website. Um, so I did a lot of feature engineering. Um, here note that odds home, odds draw, odds away, they are the median of three bookmakers that are available in each and every one of the season that my dataset covers. I include, excluded some games. Those games in which one of the two teams involved was not actually part of the league in a previous season. This therefore allows me to include the previous season's data, at least the average data there, uh, as a feature. But first let's have a look at the historical winners and historical data overall. It's quite striking that only seven teams out of these 28 have what you would, might want to call a winning record, so that's more wins than losses. Obviously Bayern Munich pretty much expected it does the best here. But on the other side, 21 teams are sort of net losers, lose more games than they win, which is quite interesting, at least to me. There are further some historical tendencies, and this is actually where the naive picks come from. So if you were to just always pick the home team or the favorite, you'd end up winning around about 50% of the picks that you make. And also if you combine the two, that is around about 50% of the home team when they are favorites. That's how often they win. There is some predictability in the data. Here these two scatter plots show the average points in the prior season and the average goals in the prior season uh, in combination with on the y-axis the average points in the season under consideration. So it, there's a tendency that if you had if you scored lots of, lots of goals, got lots of points in the previous season, you're also more likely to get a lot of points in the following season. If you're not familiar with uh, soccer and the points, you get three points for a win, one point for a draw, and no points for a loss. So essentially, getting more points means more wins. As I said, I did a lot of feature engineering. In general, I combined the games of the previous season for each team in total goals scored, total scored goals scored against, and points at the end of the season yeah, as a general um, feature for each team in a game, and then for the home team and the away team accordingly to whether they are home or against, or uh, away, sorry, um, features based on that. Also the home draw and away odds, which basically tells the model if the team tends to be the favorite or the underdog in any given matchup over the previous games. Um, total. 47 features, that is the previous statistics, um, the average statistics over the previous N games, so hyperparameter, and over the previous M games, the rank among all teams involved then on a game day. 
of course, lots of hyperparameters that you can tune. Two I just mentioned on the general side, but also there I, in, I, I allowed the model to sort of weight the previous season's statistics um, based on the idea that the previous season may have an impact on the very first games of a season well, that follows on the previous one, um, but that may decrease over the course of the season. So if it's 100% then previous season will have an impact on all games, if it's any less then the impact will decline, decline uh, over time. For the neural network, the, the decision tree and the support vector machine, these are all fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, the nodes in a dense layer, dropout rate, that is pretty straightforward. The results for all models is then that the neural net does the best, 53.52% um, accuracy. If you combine all three models, and say for example democracy means here that all three models sort of vote, and if there is a winner of this vote, then that is the pick. That improves the performance of all three taken individually, and also unanimous, which is then if all models agree on a prediction, that is than the pick. Note, however, that Unanimous only picks about 62% of all the games in the test set. On the other side, that means that 38% uh, of the games, the, the three base case models sort of uh, don't agree on what's going to happen. The favorite approach yields 53.17% of accuracy, and the home team perf uh, method does the worst at below 50%. The unanimous approach outperforms significantly all other approaches except democracy, as an important note here, and the neural network does not significantly outperform any other approach. But the neural net nevertheless does the best of, out of all three models, and here is an overview of our, the features, the hyperparameters, the model, how it's built. 47 features, 47 neurons, ReLU activation function, 30% robot, then, and so on. You can see it on the right. In the end, of course, since there are three possible outcomes, there's softmax activation function. Yeah, that's the overview of the model that performed the best. Actually, but you might note that the number of previous games for the average statistics as well as for the ranks is 15. So there is some impact of the previous games. Evaluating the network the neural network. Um, accuracy, 53%. On the left-hand side, you can see the confusion matrix. Um, what you'll also note is that the model very much likes to predict the home team to win. In the middle column, that is when the neural network predicts a team to win. Top five teams are based on accuracy. Bottom five teams, lowest accuracy. Uh, right column, pretty much the opposite. Not exactly though since this is where the neural network predicts the team not to win. So it predicts a draw or the other team to win. Again, top five are based on accuracy and bottom five as well. These are both, the middle and the right column are filtered for at least five predictions. Now, based on this, you might say that why not just predict in games where one of these teams is involved, where the model does fairly well. Um, if you do that, you can actually improve the performance of the models. Not, not, all, of, not all of them, but of the neural network uh, and of the decision tree, for example. Um, that is, sort of, you train the model, and based on the validation set, you pick the number of teams that the model pe models perform well on um, and implement it that way. But also note that with that approach, you're not going to be able to pick each and every game. So just a fraction of them, actually. Another metric you might want to look at is the returns, since the odds are already available in the feature set. So here what you can see on the left-hand side is, once again, the accuracy, and on the right-hand side, the return you would have gained based on one unit bets on each and every prediction of the model. Um, note here that the neural net does the best, even though it performs worse in terms of accuracy than democracy and unanimous. This is based on the fact that if you pick the favorite, the odds you're getting will be significantly worse 
than when you're picking the underdog. So in other words, the neural net tends to correctly predict an underdog, whereas if you're going by the unanimous or democracy approach, you will most likely pick the favorite to win, but profitably, as you can see here. Also one note here is that the model is not designed nor intended to optimize uh, any betting strategies. Most important, however, is does it work in practice? And this is what this table shows. So this table shows the accuracy in percent for each game day 1 to 18 of the current season so far and the total of the entire season so far. What you'll notice is that all approaches are quite volatile. Each approach has a game day where it's the best and a game day where it's the worst. What you can also see is that the unanimous approach once again tends to be uh, the superior, superior approach amongst all of these methods. And overall, the neural network versus the naive approaches, it te the neural net tends to be not worse than the better of the two approaches. Uh, 11 times it's not worse, whereas 8 times it's straight up worse. So it's not, not exactly doing well. That's my presentation. Thanks for your attention. For watching. Um, as a result, overall, there's some predictability. The neural net works the best, but it's not great. So if you want to pick a winner of a game, you'll do just fine if you pick the favorite. Not so much if you pick the home team, but if you pick the favorite, you'll be, you'll be okay. If you want to have a look at the code, it's on my GitHub. You can see the link on the slide. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it.